The following podcast is a mass media production. Hey, this is Chad Namiro. And I'm Kelly Namiro. Welcome to the Balancing Chaos Podcast, a lifestyle podcast where we will interview guests about wellness, business, and just about everything in between. Our goal is to help you develop a lifestyle that promotes health, wholeness, and success. Through our conversations, we hope to inspire you to live a beautiful, full, and joyful life as you navigate balancing the chaos. We hope you enjoy. For our very first episode, we are so excited for you guys to hear our interview with the one and only Mindy Weiss. Mindy is the Hollywood celebrity party planner. Without question, one of the sweetest and kindest people we know. I'm not sure we would have made it through our wedding without her, to be honest. (laughs) Neither am I. (laughs) Definitely not. In this episode, we talk to Mind about how to connect with others during a pandemic, which has been so challenging, I know. We dish the deets on some of her top-notch celebrity bashes, and then we discuss how planning a wedding is possible even in the middle of a pandemic, even though it might be a little bit challenging. She gives some great tips on how to plan a party on a budget and make a really impactful event. Are you looking for a trusted resource for luxury Las Vegas real estate? The Ivan Share Group is the expert in the luxury Las Vegas real estate market, specializing in high-end homes and luxury high-rise properties. And trust me on this one, Chad and I can attest, they are so amazing. We've been working with them for the last few months on trying to find a new home, and they're showing us the most incredible properties. The Ivan Share Group is a dynamic team of leading real estate experts dedicated to client satisfaction. Their extensive expertise in Las Vegas Vegas and Henderson allows them to help luxury home buyers find their dream home no matter what their needs are. And like I said before, we are super, super specific on what we need, like a playroom for the kids and a home gym and (laughs) things that not all homes have. And they are really good at showing us exactly what we want to see. They're dedicated to helping you buy, sell, or invest. So contact Ivan and his team today at 702-315-0223 or visit isluxury.com to learn more and learn what they do differently. The Ivan Share Group is luxury, your trusted resource for Las Vegas real estate. Welcome everyone to the Balancing Chaos podcast. My name is Chad, this is my lovely wife, Kelly, and we are very excited about our guest today. Uh, She is our dear friend, she is an author, a mother, uh, and a celebrity event planner extraordinaire who's done events for the likes of Justin Bieber, Ellen DeGeneres, uh, and many, many others. It is my great pleasure to introduce Mindy Weiss. Hi, Mindy. Welcome to the show. Thanks. Thanks for having me. I'm very excited. It's fun talking to people that you know. So how are things in the business uh, thus far? Obviously, it's probably been a challenging year for uh, an in-person event planner. (laughs) Yes, it kind of went from 100 to zero. In seconds flat. So in March, when it all happened and the panic started, literally we had to postpone 27 events and reschedule them and find a new date. And since then have had to do that probably three more times per person. And we continue to hear things up and down um we are for some reason people want to celebrate the holidays we do have some of those events we're setting some tables for thanksgiving but it's a different it's a whole different business right now yeah definitely so Mm -hmm. for those people who are still doing the smaller events like the christmases and the thanksgiving and they want to get you know a few people together with the holidays quickly approaching Um, what are some good tips for planning a a good event and, you know, make sure you hit all the marks? Well, right now, because our world is so very different, I'm highly recommending if budget allows and you can COVID test your guests, even your family members, it really makes people feel so much better. We had a very small wedding uh, this last weekend We had everybody come, they were local, show up on uh, Thursday, a few days before. Um, We did our testing, which was the 24 hour testing as opposed 
to most of my parties are rapid tests, the 15 minute test, but it really takes that one edge off of the worry. So then you can celebrate, you know, it's very hard with, um, you know, and you want to be responsible and you want to social distance, but what's wonderful about the holidays, it's mostly your family. Mm -hmm. So you've been quarantining with them, you feel comfortable around them. So that would be number one, if you have out of towners coming in, you, you do have to be careful. You know, one, one slip can change, you know, a whole event. Then, obviously being organized you know i think people want to celebrate so bad and they're taking it out on the holidays because oh my goodness and people are decorating their houses to the hilts um we've kind of pivoted a bit and i sort of started a concierge business to keep my staff busy because i didn't want to let anybody go and they're like they're very angry with me that they have to decorate homes. <laughs> I just kind of switch them all, but I love it. Oh my God, I love it. So, and, um, so people are spending money on decorating their homes. They want us to set very beautiful tables. So we're trying to really um, use what they have. You don't need to go out and, and buy you know, just to buy. It's amazing how I love, I think I'm a little rooter or voyeur or whatever I am. I love to go into people's cabinets and pull out things that they didn't even know they had. <laughs> um, wedding gifts that they never used. Um, things that were inherited and never used. So we've really been, um, I think we've said about 10 uh, Thanksgiving tables coming up or we're going to be setting about 10 tables. And that's how we just pivoted in this crazy, unexpected, unpredictable situation that we're in. From there, you know, we talked about a couple of tips for planning right now, but I know that when you planned our wedding, which was mm -hmm. the greatest event of all time, if I do say so. I have to agree with that too. And I never say that. <laughs> um, you know, some work and some don't and that just seemed to work yeah well yeah when you planned our wedding you know I came to you after going through all of your books that you had written and through Pinterest and all this stuff and I made a little book um mm -hmm. with what I wanted my wedding to feel like and look like but for most people who are trying to plan their wedding, or it could be even like your the way that you're setting their table for Thanksgiving, something more simple like that, mm -hmm. you suggest for them to come up with some inspiration. Well, thank God for Pinterest. That uh, has really, for me, has been, and, and our industry has been a lifesaver. Yes. Now you had the most fabulous book with pictures that were big enough to, to see Usually I get little teeny little <laughs> Pinterest pictures, but a lot of my clients don't, don't have a foresight, don't have the, um, the, no, the know-it-all how to use Pinterest or how they don't know what they want. They know they want something. They know sometimes they'll use words like, I love vintage, I love modern. I lo and that can really guide me in the right direction. But I highly recommend Pinterest. Mm -hmm. I highly recommend still with, with whatever magazines are left. There's not very many anymore. Um, decorator magazines, El Decor, um, even Vogue. Veranda has amazing florals. There's just, I always say, just show me just a few pictures and I could take it from there. But, you know, like yourself, there are some that are organized and really you created this vision and whatever we couldn't do for the wedding, which we got to do a lot more than I was able to, we were able to do for your rehearsal dinner. So we were able to kind of tie in um, a lot of the looks and couples like yourself want to personalize the event. They want people to know whose wedding they're at. And you did that you know, with your style, with your colors, with the romance. Yeah, you can make it really, really unique and individualized to who you are. As a exactly, couple. right. Once you have the location, mm -hmm. then we start creating the book, 
the pictures, the illustrations, so that there's some people who are very visual and some people get it right away. I, I can walk into a blank ballroom and picture it, which I feel is such a gift to sure. myself. And I'm able to do it. I'm able to do it. Now, don't ask me to measure a table or to, because they all make fun of me that I, I fit a size 13 in a size two room. You know, I can, I'll get it in there. Um, but from there, then we create our deck, our storybook, which people love, you know, and, and uh, with COVID and being home, our book has gotten even better. We've, we've elevated it a bit. So then we start off with, um, our welcome area and our ceremony and we take them through the day that's our story of what we think they'll want but you know nine times out of ten they'll look at it and go oh no you know and we'll change it up um, and then from there then we schedule which is one of my favorite uh, meetings is actually doing a setup for our clients where it becomes 3D, it becomes alive. And we set up a table with the vision that we are hoping that that's through the communication, through the pictures, through all the ideas that that's what they were hoping for. Sometimes we're off. <laughs> but, um, we try to hit it or some part of it so that we know where we can go next. And it, it's really a really fun, exciting day looking at dishes and glasses and the flowers and I love that. I mean, I love tastings too, mm -hmm. <laughs> when we're actually tasting the food, but I think decor and design. And the more we do with a couple, whether it's a wedding, anniversary, any sort of party, when we could check the list off, when we check the people get more and more relaxed. You know? yeah. The experience of walking into the room and seeing what it was gonna look like. Yeah. Even like, you're so blown away. <clears throat> Well, we hope for that, yeah. yeah that's but the feeling of, oh, right. wow, this is what my experience is going to be. It's just the most special, special feeling. And you and your team do the best job. Thank that. you. Thank you. That's what we, we hope for, that the experience, because everyone will say, oh, my God, are you so stressed out, you know, to the clients, to the couples, to the family. And I'm hoping that, you know, we can eliminate that I tend to be a little laid back and not, I don't get panicky with the clients. <laughs> and people continue to ask me what drugs I'm on and I keep telling them, I'm just tired. I'm just tired, you know? But, um, you know, I, I see the sense of humor in it all. You know, you, you, you got to laugh at some of it. You know, there's lots of crying. There's lots of emotions. But I mostly, you know, I can find a little bit of a sense of humor with, you know, I take it very seriously. But also if I can get the client to the point of saying, you're right, you know, that is funny. Or, you know, it really loosens everybody up a bit. Okay, I have one more before I let you ask a question, but you're on this topic of being stressed out. And I remember at our wedding, it was so funny because it seems so silly now, but I look back and there was like three weeks before we could not figure out what poem my mom and my brother were going to read at our wedding. And it was just a huge ordeal. I'm like, oh my gosh, that is so crazy in the scheme of everything. So for yeah. people, who like are you know thinking about stress and how stressed they're going to be on their wedding day how what do you say to, to clients to keep stress to a minimum because it, you were the force that kept me calm <laughs> right <laughs> well I continue to say manage manage it in a sense that it's one day keep your eye on the ceremony not all the hoopla, keep your eye on the ceremony. And once I say it's going to have a life of its own, no matter all the ingredients, everything we put into this perfect pie, it's going to bake the way it's going to bake. I, I, it's going to overbake, it's going to underbake, it's going to, you know, and I say, but your stress is real. You know, I'm not going to lessen it. You need to feel it, but I hope that I can make it better and make you realize that it seems big now, but on the day, you're not even going to hear those poems, unfortunately. <laughs> you know, it's, 
you know, that's why we do video. Yeah. Um, you just, you know, you'll just, hopefully you'll hear it, but, but it was a big deal. Those were important to you. And I don't, I don't, you know, disrespect what, what's making you nervous or you want it to be right. And you want, I get it, but you know, I'm there to talk you through it. You know, I, I wear many hats, many, many hats. I could be a doctor, a therapist, a stylist, a <laughs> tailor. A, yeah. <laughs> I, I can, I, now I can do it. And it's funny as I call my youngers, my younger team members, you know, and they watch me and they laugh and they, I go, you'll be doing this. You will be doing this because I don't want to do this anymore. So you need to do this stuff. <laughs> you know, at this party we had recently, two of the team members goes, okay, it's time to fold up all the linens. And I go, oh, I don't do that anymore. I'm sorry. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Good night. I'm just like, oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> You got to start at the bottom, just like any job, any job. Yeah. So I read something that you had said, uh, I think it was a few years back, but you said you're responsible for people's memories. And that, that really rang true with both yeah. of us. Yeah. You're in charge of the event, but, but I think, you know, I don't know if it should be your job, but I think oftentimes it does potentially fall to, to you and the team is, is kind of keeping everyone sane. And, and like you said, the eye on the prize and it's such a big part of it because there's such a buildup and potential. Mm -hmm that you know i think it's the most commonly given advice for, for people it's getting the most married. important day of people's lives yeah yes. yeah it goes by fast yeah. and just it's it's gonna happen how it happens like you said and you gotta enjoy it mm -hmm. um, well I, yeah actually i don't think anything did go wrong at our way no. but i would say in most no. i was actually trying to think about that today did anything it went too fast it went too fast like it was going on to five o'clock in the morning, but it was yeah. right. longer than most with the no curfew. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. That really doing events in, in Vegas really, you know, it changes the whole game for us. But, um, you know, when people say, what would you say is the most difficult part of my job? And I, I say, I'm happy about this, but I feel it's a great responsibility to yeah. be responsible for people's memories like that. Yeah. Because, you know, this is something that is in your mind. I can't erase it. I don't have no control of it. Yeah. So I, I would say that's the toughest. You know, Forbes voted us the one of the five most difficult jobs I... that, that exists. Mm -hmm. And... <laughs> I mean, that's along with policemen and firefighters, and but I got to agree with them, I think. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we have so many people that say, oh, you're so lucky. And you know, Kelly, I mean, you know that you, you've experienced my job, but it's not all that it's cracked up to be, but it sure gives you all the feelings. Just that wonderful feeling. It's absolutely, I feel yeah. like war is so big there um yeah. you're right I actually did a quick internship when I was in graduate school working mm. for an event planner before I ever met you and mm. I thought that was what I wanted to do and I was like oh my gosh this job is so hard because you are really managing other people's emotions um yeah. so oh yeah what is the hardest or what was the is the toughest like bride story that you you've had or is there one it, it wasn't the bride it was the groom's mother oh man. yeah that was and it it happened recently with that within the last few years and i just you know you get to a certain point in your life where you don't tolerate it anymore you know being treated look at i know i'm being paid and i become an employee actually for a limited amount of time and i respect that and my job's subservient i get it but no longer do you and especially in our society today do you want to be treated poorly you know so i think that's the hardest because i'm so sensitive that you know there's a difference between someone being angry and rightfully so and someone just treating you poorly so i haven't had the 
I mean, they talk about Brazilians all the time. Maybe in 32 years, I've had two. Maybe. It's, I have been so lucky with my, my couples, my brides, and they've been just lovely. But sometimes it's the, the, you know, the parents, the, the in-laws, the, you know, it's something else. The, that is the only ingredient that didn't work or something. Yeah. And I mean, Mindy, you are like the easiest person to get along. <laughs> so, I, mean, I finally said to this person, I said, you are so mean. Like, I, I just, it was like, who are you? And, you know, like, and I, I just, and that ruined the whole, like, it makes you question what you do with any job. You have an experience and there could be a real bad one and then you question it. But, you know, I've had cake fall, you know, explode and implode and fall. I've had officiants not show up to marry them. I've had, you know, I've had, I have enough information to write a really funny movie probably. And people wouldn't believe some of the stuff that happens, but you know, I always say, just add it, add it to the, you know, the, the fun stories that we, that we know. Mm-hmm. That is amazing given, you know, I guess maybe the perception that the celebrities can be hard to, to work with. That is hey. amazing to hear that after, I think, 32 plus years you've been in the yeah. game. And I find celebrities, they don't have the time. So you, they're so respectful of time because they're so busy. Yeah. You're kind of, you're scheduled in. You do it like I always said, Kelly, that our meetings were the fastest meetings. Like <laughs> we would fly into Vegas, bam, we'd be in the questions that 30 minutes, maybe an hour, we're like on our way out. We're going, wow, we look that, that's awesome. We were like, yes, yeah. <laughs> so, and I think that has to do with busy people, respect for time, and that's like a lot of the celebrities. They just want to get what they need to get out and move on and be feel that they're involved and they make the decisions and go from there. Quickly pausing this episode of the show to let you know that my private one-on-one coaching container is now open. Over the course of 2021, I'm only going to be working with a small select group of women to help them return to feeling like they're at home in their bodies, to help them lose resistant weight, to feel less anxious and more energized. My one-on-one coaching is truly for you if you're tired of feeling depleted, overwhelmed, bloated, or like you're just not enough. There's no magic pill or cleanse or detox that's going to work. You are really ready to make that commitment to yourself and create the habits that will lead you to hormonal balance and vibrant health. I'm here to help you get to the root cause and create meaningful change. If you're feeling called to work with me so that you can finally feel at home in your body, head to the link in the show notes to learn more. So on the, on the celebrity topic, I, I think you started out in invitations, right? And then I think your big or one of your first big celebrity events was uh, Andre Agassi's and Brooke Shields' wedding. And so the yeah. question is, you know, how did you really get into that business? Because, you know, for our listeners who might not be aware, you are pretty much the de facto uh, celebrity event wedding. Thank you. Thank you. I, I think one of the main things is I live in LA. LA. I'm surrounded. There's a big population here. Um, well, with Brooke and Andre, that was my very first celebrity experience. And I, I got the job from a, a, an assistant of Brooke's, but I didn't know who was coming in because that typically is what happened. They don't, they don't tell you right away and stuff. All of a sudden, Brooke Shields walked in with a you know, big container that we use now to be organized and you know then seeing someone come in with a big plastic container, you're like, wow. And she had all her dreams in that box. Everything that she wanted, she sat right on the floor because I'm always sitting on the floor. That's kind of my thing. And um, it was awesome, but I was so naive to what was going to happen. I mean, I've heard of paparazzi, but I never, you know, you're in LA, so you see it, it doesn't even phase you. 
<laughs> and um, and that I, I find that if you do a celebrity event and it goes well, then it's like their own community. You know, wow. oh well, she did that and it was good, and they trusted her. And so I think that's why I got more or more celebrities hire me. And and then you make friends. You know, you just like. You get that addiction. You know what happens is once you have someone doing everything for you and, you know, coming up with ideas. Or I always say I'm, I'm an encyclopedia of anything. I love the challenge. You want pink underwear with white trim or whatever you want. I feel I can find it. You can. <laughs> I can find it. And I, I'm up for the challenge. Yes. I drive my kids crazy with it, but I'll find it. <laughs> right, so from there you really started your career so what I mean you had a, your career before that but well, yeah it, it was on the cover of people magazine it was success the marriage wasn't successful but the wedding was very successful <laughs> I would say I'm not responsible for the marriage just the wedding <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so from there, then it started trickling in, you know. Yeah. How many events were you doing a year? Uh, back then, maybe 12 events. And what maybe. about? And now, well, now yeah. I have five event planners. Yeah. Our busiest year probably was last year. We did 110 events. Wow. It's a lot because you also include small birthday parties. My favorite are kids' birthday parties, of course, and showers. I love, I love those because typically they're during the day and it's only two to three hours and you get to do fantasy, like cuteness. And Which reminds me to call you about Wes's first birthday. Yes. He's <laughs> coming. I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah. How the West was O N E. That's oh my, my God! Shut up! That is so cute. So I don't know if I would have come up with that one. I'm calling you, and we're planning it. Oh my God! That's brilliant. <laughs> you got it in you. You either have it or you don't have it. You have it. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. You must have so many repeat customers because you know, ideally, you only have one wedding, but you know, right. But you have baby showers, birthdays, and so. Mm -hmm. you know. and, I, and I call them, I call them legacy clients. I've gone through their whole life. I've yeah. done birth announcements. Well, I actually did the Kardashians' birth announcements. The first four, Courtney, Kim, Chloe, and Rob. Yeah. That's how long I've been with them. And then wow. they, they moved, and then I stopped doing stuff for them. And then just five years ago was invited back. So they become this, uh, you know, legacy client where I go from birth announcements all the way through to their weddings. Yeah. I, used, I used to be the young hip planner. Now I'm catching up to all the moms and all the. <laughs> you are the young hip planner. I'm trying to stay hip. I'm trying to stay in there. Yeah. But I hire really cool people. So there, I'm still, you know. Oh, yeah. When did you first start working with the Kardashians? I started actually my first party. I, I knew Chris because I worked at this little stationery store where everybody ordered their birth announcements, their stationery. You know, everybody wrote letters then, and every invitation was printed, not digital. Yeah. And then I actually did Kim's first birthday party, but I wasn't a party planner yet. I just helped, yeah. you know, on all the cute stuff. And Chris had great taste, you know, she was a party girl. And that is why all her kids love to celebrate because she put it in them. Yeah. You know, all their great memories, they want to keep celebrating because they remember the feelings, you mm -hmm. know, that they had. So, yeah. and right. then, yeah. And then they had another event planner and then um, Kim hired me for Chris's 60th. And that's when we all started again. Wow. full circle i think that that's why you know we talk about it a little bit but i think that's why so many of your clients do keep coming back right Mint? because you you there are things that you do within events that make the experiences so so memorable and 
that is what your gift is. That is what you are. Yeah. So I have a two part question for you. The first yeah. part, what, if someone's planning an event on their own, what are a couple of small things that they can do to make the experience memorable for their guests? And then the second thing is now that we live in a world that is so focused on that device that is in our hands, our smartphones, how do you get people to be more present and in the moment when they're at an event? Oh, good questions. <laughs> um, the first one is you have to personalize it. Yeah. How do you make it your own? I think a party at home is the best party you can have because already it's personalized, right? Mm -hmm. Serving the food that you eat and your guests may enjoy. Being, being conscious to what people eat, gluten-free, you know, like being, being sensitive to people's needs. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, you have one guest that may be gluten-free, but you've made a little dessert area for her. You will have that memory in that person's head forever because that makes a perfect perfect hostess. Um, <laughs> yeah, you guys would be happy. Yeah. Um, but, you know, if you are inviting people to your home or to a party, maybe it's not in your home, you, it's not all about you. It's not all about you. It's you are inviting these people in. And I, I always tell my clients that let's make it about you, but for them, mm -hmm. right? So when they walk in, they would say, oh, this is so, you know, Kelly and Chad, this is so, you know, this reminds me of, you know, how they might eat and how they may serve. And like, so I really have to pull it out of them. Um of who they are and I have to learn quick if I don't know them. And that is really important when you're planning your own party. You, it's not all about the money that you're spending. It's about the feeling that they're leaving with, you know? So you don't need 20 activities for the kids, but I'll tell you a coloring book and crayons and some empty boxes that you made a house out of. These are things that the kids remember and it doesn't cost anything. Yeah. And remember, the 99 cent store has great little secrets there. So <laughs> that it's was a great place to go. We, you did our rehearsal dinner, the video that we made. Like, it doesn't cost anything to put together a video yeah. of old photos. But the That's way cool. that that left everyone feeling of all yeah. these old memories of Chad and I, it's just like yeah. pulls on your heart. <laughs> well, it's pulling on your heart. It's making you laugh. You're hitting all the emotions, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the food gives you the scent, so you're remembering what you ate. So you're hitting all what you're hearing, what you're, you know, if I could hit every scent that mm -hmm. people are experiencing, then it typically is a very successful event without costing a fortune, which yeah. now, you know, we're always conscious of. You know, I, I'm fortunate I get very nice budgets and things, but... There's always a budget. There's always a limit. And, you know, you have to work hard to really not spend the money, you know, and wake up the next morning and go, oh, you know, why did I do that? When if you dig deep into you, it, it will be just as successful. So yeah. do you feel like when you're when you're hitting those five senses, that's really what keeps people off of their phones and from getting distracted? Well, no. No. Onto the phones. <laughs> the phones have been such a challenge, I'm sure, as you know, because from the minute people walk in, they're 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 taking pictures. They're worried about posting it. They're they want to get everything up, and you know, without thinking, you know, you, what we suggest we do really great signage about, you know. Give your phone a break. We have a phone station. Please check them in. You yeah. can come check them on your children. We make it really easy. But keep your memory in your head and not on your phone. And we will give you pictures. We will, you know, give you pictures. Look, Kim's party just in Tahiti. She just had a great birthday party. She, she just said, guys, don't post anything. Let's not let them know where we are. Let's enjoy this island we're on. Let's, I'm telling you, people were 
Yes. When they almost bleed. You know, it's a job. Well, you know, it's a job. You, it's part of your job. And it's, it's constant. And when you don't have to do it. Now, on the way home, she said, okay, post what you want. You know, let's edit it a little, but post what you want. And it really made a difference. It made a difference. It's making a difference in my weddings because in their pictures, they're not having their phones up. You yeah. know, one. It, it's and now people at the be, at the beginning it was very hard to get their phones out of the, you know check their phones in. Yeah, and I understand it. I am the same way on my phone. But give them thirty minutes and they start decompressing off the phone. It's yeah. amazing. They do. I remember we had signage for our ceremony. And people I, checked their phones in at ours. We, we didn't, we were like nervous about it, but I didn't want exactly what Mindy said. I didn't want people to turn around when I walked in. There's all phones. Yes. Up. yes. <laughs> and that's the picture. That's the picture. People are much more um, amenable to it. They're, they get it. Now they get it. It's kind of an old thing, but at the beginning, I you know, with my celebrity events, imagine me getting the phones out of their hands. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was tough. Yeah. Yeah, and there's that element of security and privacy that's just right. so And also now, now we give them a warning, like with the invitation or with an email. You know, fun. we're so excited to see you next week. This is a no so, you know, phone wedding, no, you know. There's been so much talk of the magic of playing an event, you know, being there in person down to every detail, just, you know, we're, we're seven plus months into a, you know, a very deadly pandemic. Have you been able to capture that magic in some of your digital events? I mean, is that possible? I certainly think it. Well, you know, <laughs> you know what's happening is that, and it's going to happen more is so my big weddings, they decided they really want to get married no yeah. matter what on that date. People are very attached to their dates, you know? Yeah. It's a commitment to that date. And so we've been doing what they call macro, uh, macro matrimonies. I call them mini matrimonies. Mm -hmm. But three of them so far have said, you know what? And they've had between 10 to 30 people. Yeah. And they're saying, that was enough for us. Yeah. That was enough for us. And we're not going to have the big, we're going to buy a house. <laughs> you know, they're like, we'll buy a house and stuff. Um, so I think people are realizing you don't have to entertain as much. You don't have to be as on because the people who are there are typically your family and your really closest. You don't have all the bridesmaids. You don't have the, you know, but it's enough. Apparently it's enough for three of them so far, you know, and, and everyone. Yeah. 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 Even if your wedding's large like ours, I mean, those are those 30 people, give or take, are the ones you gravitate towards. Oh, yeah, you had your posse. You had those, it was about 30 people, and you saw, you know, yeah. so close in those relationships, you know. I mean, I hope my big weddings don't go away, but, you know, as, as long as they keep hiring us for, any part of their celebration yeah yeah, yeah. definitely mm -hmm. so mind this time has gone by super fast oh. we all wrap up with our podcast with some like quick fire questions so we want you to answer whatever comes to mind first so you want to answer, ask the first one okay so what is your morning routine coffee coffee first i don't even pick up the phone before my coffee so coffee, shower, coffee, shower. Am I going to exercise? Probably not. <laughs> Back and forth. Waver, waver, waver. But, and then, well, now I work from home until I go into the office. So okay. that's my morning routine right now. So you're and still then, not going to at all at this point? Well, I could. They're all going. It's just my excuse now. I don't want to go. <laughs> <laughs> It's my excuse for everything. <laughs> I've, I've always been working from home. There's not a, a big change for me. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I think from home. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What is the best thing that you've eaten this week? Oh, my daughter-in-law cooks. So we had pumpkin chocolate chip bread. Ooh, yum. Ooh, so good. I'm still thinking about it. 
Mm-hmm. If you're a color, what would you be? <laughs> I would be nude. I'm obsessed with nude color now. Yeah. Nude with a touch of blush. Oh my yeah. gosh. Okay. That first of all, that's gonna be I think my sister's wedding color. She she Oh looked. yeah. But I would say like I was thinking you were gonna say something like super vibrant because I feel like you're just like this vibrant person. Well, that but now I'm not I'm in that kind of mellow mode. Beautiful, maybe some lipstick, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in that kind of yeah. monochromatic. I was going to say pink at first, but I thought, oh, my whole, with my grandkids here, my life is pink. So now I'm going into the other part of pink, into the nudie blush. Yeah. I've seen some pink in a few baby showers. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, me too. My whole closet's pink. (laughs) Um, What is on your nightstand? Uh, Pictures of my husband and I, a wedding picture. Pictures of my two granddaughters, a vintage lamp, a beautiful vintage lamp from the 50s, and my hydro flask filled with ice water. That's what we got. (laughs) Have to have it. There it is. That's a big one. (laughs) I've never drank water my whole life until now. There's something about this straw. I love the straw. Yeah, I know. No. Yeah. I would not commit to it unless I bought of the straw and now I'll never see her without it. It's crazy. There's something, I don't know what it is, but. Any good books, man? Are you a reader? I used to be, but I can't even lie. The last thing I read was Michelle Obama's book, which I thought was really motivating. Before that, Chandra, Chandra Rhymes, The Year of Yes. Mm-hmm. Really inspiring, but. You know, I love to just surf the web way too much. That's where I get all my inspiration. Seriously, I can colors, Pantone colors, fashion shows. I mean, look at your wedding. We got we got the Dior fashion show in there. My dream. (laughs) That that purple flower. Oh my god! Okay, like when I asked your parents if it was okay, it was like, oh yes. Because if she got it, your mom, like, yes, she knew exactly what I wanted to do. <laughs> it was stunning. I didn't think, I didn't think that, that was even possible. Yeah. I didn't even know what it was. <laughs> I think the guys are just, you know, in some ways along for the ride. And I, mm-hmm. shock. Oh, yeah. You don't even know the things that are possible that they can create. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it's getting better and better. It's getting more creative. It doesn't how many mood boards you see or visualizations, it's mm-hmm. never even close to you know what you experience and you catch it yeah you don't even I, I remember that picture of you guys the backs of you walking into the tunnel yes. I, yes. I love that picture i love that picture yeah. we were talking about it the other day when we were talking about my sister getting married this is the the word for our wedding if you could put it down into one word it, it was a fairy tale like the mm-hmm. whole thing it was a yeah. And that's how she describes it. She goes, my sister had the fairy tale and she's more ethereal. Like, yeah, she's more about the light. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It's going to be perfect. Mm-hmm. All right, so, Mind, give our listeners your best tip for balancing the chaos of life. You know better than most. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I think the best tip, and I must admit, I think it comes with a little bit of age, a little bit of life lessons that what you think is extremely important today, which it is, which it is for you, will not, will not have, will not have the feeling that it did a week from that moment. And I, oh, I want to talk it out. I want to do it. I'll, I'll, I'll listen and everything, but it's like a mountain. We're going to climb that peak together, but next week you'll already be over the mountain. So think about how much energy you want to put in that. And my favorite saying is, and I got it from Joel Osteen, 
don't put a don't put a question mark where God has put a period. That yeah. is how I go through life. Yeah. Yes. Don't <laughs> keep questioning it. It's done. It's done. We're going to move on. It's hard to do. Right. It's hard to do, but that's what I tell them. Let's move on. Let's move yeah. on. And how can you learn from that? <laughs> I, I just, it's changed everything. You yeah. know, the way I think about things. And um, it's amazing that I, I listen to Joel Osteen, you know, we have different religious beliefs and stuff, but I get so much from it. I take so much and I try to bring it into my, my job, my business and stuff. I love that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be, it was the biggest day of our lives, but then yes. shortly thereafter. There was another big day in your life. Yes. Yes. Nothing, you know, it was absolutely perfect. And, Nothing went wrong at ours, but if anything went wrong at somebody else's, I'm sure nobody else notices. That's nope. <laughs> exactly a hundred percent. Nobody knows, and there are things that go wrong, but you don't know. I don't tell anybody what goes wrong. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was interviewed recently, and they said, "How do you justify your fee?" And I said, mm -hmm. "Well, if someone dies, you won't know it." <laughs> and I got hired. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so good. Mindy Weiss, thank you so much for being on our podcast. Thank you, guys. I'm honored that you asked me, and you guys are going to be the perfect podcast. The thank perfect podcast. Yes. Talk to you soon. All right. Mwah. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Off to the grandkids. Yes. Bye bye. 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 Hey, thanks for listening. Please make sure you rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. You can also connect with us on social media at Wellness by Kelly. Drop us a DM for who you want to hear from.